Hi everyone! In this week's project, I'm going to be showing you how you can create your very own solar-powered phone charger that fits inside an Altoids tin. Let's get started. For this project, you're going to need an Altoids tin. Any color works. Solar panels. I found these small solar panels on eBay, a link to which will be in the description. A small USB DC to DC boost converter. This converter converts the 3 volts from the batteries to the 5 volts required for charging a phone. These two batteries right here, which are simply rechargeable AA batteries. One Zener diode. I bought about a pack of 100 of them for about $3 on eBay some random wire, a small switch, and electrical tape. Oops, I almost forgot. You're gonna need some 51,000 ohm and 43,000 ohm resistors. I'll explain why you need those later on. What I have set up here is a demonstration to show you why it's necessary to use those resistors. What we're going to do with the resistors is create something called a voltage divider. A voltage divider uses two resistors between the positive rail and ground you use the pins in the middle of the resistors to generate a voltage that's lower than your input voltage. There's a couple drawbacks to this, however. You can't draw very much current from it, and you have to use higher wattage resistors if you want to draw any significant amount of current from it. A typical USB cable has four pins, positive, ground, data plus, and data minus. Now, the positive and negative pins are where you put the five volts for charging the phone, However, Apple iPhones require a special input voltage on the data pins, a voltage of approximately 1.4 volts between the pins. Now, in order to achieve this voltage, we're going to use the resistor divider we just talked about to lower the 5 volts from the output of the boost converter down to 1.4 volts that will signal the iPhone to start charging. Turning on the benchtop power supply in 3, 2, 1. As you can see, the light has lit up on the DC to DC boost converter, but the iPhone is completely unaffected. It does not want to charge. All right, so begin by soldering your 46 and 51 kilo ohm resistors together like so. Solder a wire right in the middle. There's one pin, and there's the second pin. Now all we have to do is hook up the center connection to the center two leads. And now for a really quick test. If we touch the black lead to the center two pins, the phone starts charging. Fantastic. We know we're on the right track. The next step is to tin the back pads of the solar panel. If we flip the panel over, you'll see we have a bunch of contacts here. The left four contacts are all positive, and the right four contacts are all negative. So if we go ahead and solder, a small bead of solder to one positive and a small bead of solder to one negative pad. Now we have the means to attach wires. Next, we're going to take two of the rechargeable batteries and hot glue them together. Apply a large amount of hot glue and hold them there for a moment. Next, flip the batteries over and apply more hot glue to the other side. Next, you're going to need to tin the terminals of the battery pack. To do this, heat up your soldering iron as hot as it gets, hold the iron onto one side of the battery, making sure not to short out any connections, and apply some solder. All right, now that all four connections have solder on them, we're going to need to bridge the positive of one battery to the negative of another battery. When you're done, this is what it should look like. The next step is to solder in place the Zener diode. The black striped side needs to connect up with the positive side of the battery. This makes it so that when charging, the solar panel forward biases the diode and starts charging the battery pack. When it's not charging, the voltage at the solar panel is lower than that at the battery. Normally, this would cause the batteries to start discharging into the solar panel because the solar panel would act like a big resistor. This diode prevents self-discharge. 
Before you move on, make sure everything looks like this. You have the two ends of the batteries connected together over here. And on the other end, you have one wire and the diode connected to the positive side. And on the other side, you have two wires connected to the negative. Next, what you need to do is to take one of the negative wires connected to the battery pack and solder it to the negative terminal of the solar panel. Next, take a small wire and solder it to the positive connection. Next, take the battery pack and hot glue it to the solar panel. The battery pack should be on the inside of the solar panel edge by about one quarter of one inch. Take this small wire right here, which we solder to the positive connection of the solar panel, and solder it to this end of the diode. Once that's done, clip off any excess lead. Okay, so we have a little problem. I finished building the solar powered phone charger, and then as I was editing the video, I realized I was missing footage. I couldn't go back because I don't have enough time to build another one. So I'm gonna end up having to show you the process of how I put it together after it's been put together. I'm so sorry. So the next step was to drill a hole in the side of the Altoids tin. I drilled the hole, put in a power switch, and hot glued it in place. Then I took the assembly that we made with the solar panel, the battery pack, and if you can see right there, there is the small diode that we used. And I wired that up according to the schematic that I'll be posting in the description. Next, I cut with the tin snips a rectangular hole in the box and hot glued in place the DC to DC converter. Next, in the lid of the Altoids tin, I used a hole punch to gnaw out a section to allow the lid to close properly. Without that section, the lid couldn't close because it wouldn't clear the button. Next, I simply wired the switch in line with the negative lead going from the batteries to the DC to DC converter. That's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple build. And if you push the power button, you should get the red LED to light up on the DC to DC boost converter. Congratulations, you successfully built a solar powered phone charger that's small and compact and fits inside an Altoids tin. A complete parts list a complete schematic, and a list of where you can buy some of the more difficult to obtain parts, such as the solar panels and Zener diodes, will all be found in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, feel free to click the subscribe button and check out some of my other videos.